Hello, David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. I've got a really interesting topic. This topic's way too big for one individual. So I invited a friend. I'm going to get to him in a second. But let me obviously tell you what uh, the topic is. There is something out there called the Daniel Craig effect. Now, some people call it the Daniel Craig phenomenon. And it's, it's not something you can look up in a science magazine. But a lot of us have experienced it. And I really wanted to chat about it today with a very good friend that I've known for a long time, John Williams, welcome to the show. Oh, David, thank you so much for having me. This is uh, really exciting for me. As a fan of your work and of your show for so long, the fact that I actually get to be on your show is incredible. I'm oh, super you're, excited. You're crazy, <laughs> I didn't expect that, but that was very nice of you. Yeah. Well, uh, by the way, we've, we've, we've got to tell everybody for the, for the horribly uninitiated, you know, and, and a lot of people call you JW. I don't yes. know if I'm uncomfortable yes. with that yet, but John, <laughs> what, what, how do people really know of you and certainly yeah. your voice? Sure, sure. I am uh, uh, the co-host of the Music of Bond episodes on James Bond Radio. So I um, was brought on a couple of years ago by Tom and Chris to focus primarily on the music side of the Bond franchise, which, as you know, is a huge part um, I was a, a fan and a listener of James Bond Radio, was able to, do, do, uh, to deduce that Tom's fiance lived in Los Angeles where I lived. So we went out, we had pints, and I think on that first meeting I put in his ear, hey, if you need a Felix Leiter for the show, um, and I love the music. We actually walked from the pub down to a music store and ended up buying uh, From Russia With Love on vinyl together. And so out of that friendship, uh, uh, you know, I got a phone call. I actually got an email. I still have the email that Tom sent me asking me to, you know, if I'd like to come on and, and host the music shows. And, you know, it's just been an incredible, wonderful experience. Uh, and above all, it's meeting people like yourself and the other fans and the community that is being created around all the different Bond, you know, websites and groups and whatnot. That's really exciting, right? I mean, it's, totally. it's the core of what is happening. And I... You know, you and I were messaging the other day and I said, you know, this group of people that are coming together globally, it's so exciting, uh, the it friendships. Is. So It is. And, and I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I became enamored with John because, uh, you know, the, the storytelling that you have in association with the James Bond themes and soundtracks, I think has actually evolved. I think many years ago when I first started to hear your name and, and connect, you know, it was almost like... Uh, this is a weird analogy, but when I was a kid and I would watch the Batman series with Adam West and you would see Batgirl come on, you'd get really excited. You're like, oh, it's going to be a Batgirl episode. Anytime there yeah. was a John Williams episode oh. on JVR, I'd get really excited and you well, can interview you. people. Your storytelling is amazing. But hold on a second. That's not exactly why <laughs> I invited you today. Um, so let me just catch people up on the inaugural, I'll call it the reboot of JBR, James Bond Radio. Uh, John has been promoted uh, to a full agent now, um, and not just music, but a full agent. But he said something that was very interesting. It was a shot heard around the world, <laughs> something about man crushes and Daniel Craig. Could you remind us just, you know, an overview of what well, you said? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we, you know, I'm here to serve Tom's vision. And you know, Tom has a master plan for the reboot of James Bond Radio. And, you know, we, we, we came out of the gate with a roundtable discussion, No Time to Die. And, you know, we, we're not winging it. You know, there's a plan that's in place when we have these sort of shows. And the Man Crush segment at the end was certainly not part of the, uh, the notes that were distributed to all double O agents. But it's something I'm fascinated with, not only with myself, but with the community. And it was really, to be honest with you, uh, us discussing our man crush. And that is a horrible way of saying it. Maybe it's not. But it was something else that you said on a recent show where you talked about how you really enjoy focusing in on the brands. That everyone has, you like the movies, you like the books, you guys like the brands. And I started thinking, well, why is that? What is it about Daniel Craig that connects us to these brands? What is it about him personally as an actor, as a man, um, as James Bond? So there's a, 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 a much bigger conversation to be had. And I said, David, I, I really wanna talk to you about this. And you said, well, let's go live. <laughs> let's go live because this is like a whole, yeah. this could I, be a whole series, quite frankly. But. Yeah, and a lot of people reached out to me based yeah. on the Man Crush segment. 
And um, so I'm, I really believe that there's a lot of us who are thinking about this, yeah. but nobody's talking about it. Yeah, um, and it, I, I, wanna, you know, I wanna put this through the behavioral science filter that I usually do. When, when we say Daniel Craig effect or even man crush, what we're talking about is Daniel Craig as an actor, as a person, as, as the um, epitome of Bond acts also as an inspiration, almost for emulation. So that, yeah. that whole type of swagger and, and how we've seen Bond. So I wanna go back for a second. You're, okay. you're not gonna get away with this easy. It's not gonna be a five <laughs> minute discussion. Everybody get a drink and buckle up. Um, when you first saw Daniel Craig in Casino Royale, if, let's say after the press you know, mm -hmm. got a hold of him and the, you know, the blonde Bond and things like that, but when you saw Casino Royale for the first time, did you realize that this was like a really different bond for a lot of reasons? Yeah, yeah I mean, when he was announced, it didn't bother me at all. I, I went to school in London and it bothered all my English friends because they were familiar with them and the blonde thing. So I think I, I took a little bit of uh, pleasure in winding them up. Um, but I'll never forget, you know, it was Bond. It was the opening weekend. I'm a huge Bond fan, uh, not to the extent that I am now, but at the time went to the film. And when he busts through the wall, I went... I mean, it, it literally pushed me back in my chair and I went, I mean, I, I sort of straightened up and was like, okay, I really need to pay attention here. And, you know, uh, by the end of the movie, I, I wanted to not be just Bond, but I wanted to be that guy, like everything about him. I was like, okay, well, there's my beacon. You know, there's the thing that I'm looking towards to sort of help guide my way. And then by the time Quantum came out, I was floored. Oh, yeah, it's about, funny. You, yeah, you've got a trajectory. Yeah. It's so similar to mine. I can't help but feel this is what a lot of people gravitate to when they say the Craig effect or the man yeah. crush. Um, it, it's not that, you know, we want to go skipping down a beach with Daniel Craig hand in hand. And maybe some people do. And, you know, <laughs> God bless. But yeah. what I did was when I saw Casino Royale, I was taken aback. And I got to be honest, the first time I saw it, I still had the likes of Pierce Brosnan in my head. And I like Brosnan. And I thought yeah. of him as like, you know, this almost like model, the way he moves in Goldeneye. And, you know, he's 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 almost uh, ballet-like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you got a guy running <laughs> through a wall, like yeah. a rugby player, and he kind of looks rough and tumble. And he's not, you know, he doesn't have that classic good looks. And I'm like, what is this all about? But then I see him, and, and I know we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, in the style, the sartorial aspects that I'm not used to Bond seeing, yeah. almost like a casual, more me type of James Bond. And I, I left there and I totally agree with you. For some reason, it took me like a year to realize that it wasn't just about the clothes. Um, I wasn't in the greatest shape of my life back yeah. in 2006. Yes. I was at yeah. a much rounder face. And I said, as I saw the making of Quantum of Solace, I'm like, this guy is shredded. And here's the sad news. He's like four months younger than me. I have no excuse. So yeah. I, I wound up using him almost like an emulation standpoint to kickstart my fitness and goals. And I think, honestly, a lot of people probably did that. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. It's funny because I've seen the before and after pictures that you've posted and um, I, I can relate to them. And it's amazing the transformation your body has gone through, you know, the weight and whatnot. Funny enough, we were just talking about this. Yesterday was my birthday. And Happy today, birthday. thank you, thank you, thank you. Today, my mom sent me a, a photo of five years ago today, standing in front of Anthony Sinclair, um, Dave Mason's place in yeah. London. I was, I was back for my birthday five years ago to yesterday. And I didn't recognize myself in the photo. Just much bigger and, you know, the jaw and all that. God, this must come across as so vain. Some, but, you know, you know, I just, I was, I looked at myself five years later and I started thinking, wow, you know, I've taken fitness serious, hired trainers, taken classes, been much better about what I eat. Yeah. You know, there's still pizza night. Um, there will always be pizza night. Um, but I, I can relate to what you're talking about. Cause I just saw a photo earlier today of like what I look like five years ago. And, um, um, and I, you know, maybe whether I can admit it or not, or I'm aware of it or not, I think perhaps, you know, using or seeing Daniel Craig and aspiring to something like, like him or like that is, you know, it's, it's, it's there. Well, you have a story too. And again, for <laughs> those that haven't heard that um, episode on JBR, um, and, and it's a debate. So, you know, your, your girlfriend may help you with the debate, but oh, yeah. yes. when you saw Daniel Craig sitting down in the, uh, <laughs> the cutout chair about to get his ball squashed, 
Um, <laughs> you let out a sigh. Now you say yeah, it's because that, the pain, but talk yeah, to me about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> this makes us even. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Uh, you know, okay, I have a theory that um, whenever you meet someone special and you start to date them, there's that moment where you have your first movie night. And Casino was my first movie night. I always divulge my bondom. I talk about the podcast. And this was a while ago that I met someone and we were watching the movie and I always make it to Saturday night. We'll get some nice champagne. And the scene, the first shot of him in the chair, evidently I exasperated like, or something like that. And she um, never, I mean, she's like, we're friends now. Yeah. And she still brings it up. You know, wow. like she was like, that was not like, I said, no, no, no. Like he's naked and vulnerable in a chair. He's getting ready to get the ball squashed. Yeah, it's going to hurt. And you but, could empathize but she was like, with him. No, 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 no. Like you saw him. You saw the shape he was in. You know, maybe she's right. Well, I, <laughs> I, don't, but, I don't know. But even you know, Lashif. You know, yeah. even Lashif, yes. you know, who's got the beautiful girlfriend says, yeah. wow, you, you know, you've really, you know, kept your body in shape. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. I mean, there's that great. whole, and here's the thing. I need, you said something important I want to gravitate to, which is you said, wow, this is going to sound vain. A lot of these conversations, a lot of these um, notices, like when you notice yeah. somebody, anybody, it doesn't need to be Daniel Craig, um, and you use that as an inspiration to maybe eat one less donut or maybe get up a little bit earlier in the morning to do that workout. It isn't bad for you. If you had an inspiration that said, ah, you know what, maybe I'll try heroin. That's bad yeah. for you. And yes. that's my point, the Daniel Craig effect. Um, a lot of people are like, well, you know, are they dressing like Daniel Craig or are they working out because of Daniel Craig? I think that's the, the, the match that's ignited to the powder keg that yeah. could become a way of life. Yeah. And you've got people like, um, you know, what's Daniel wearing? who have started an entire brand around, you know, looking at and emulating and follow these clothing and brand lines yeah. of what Daniel Craig wears, because the reality is, is every generation has used style icons to set a pattern. You've got Paul yeah. Newman, Steve McQueen. I mean, the list goes on and on. So why not Daniel Craig? Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I think everyone does it, whether they want to admit it or not. I mean, if you want to wear baggy shorts, jean shorts, and a big t-shirt, well, I bet you, you know, you probably saw Kevin Smith in it. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, the, everybody has somebody, so whether the they Kevin admit Smith it. Kevin Smith effect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look what that guy's done, speaking of uh, yeah, weight loss. True. But um, I, I, you know, it's, um, it's, well, okay, there's a question I got to ask you, though. What was the first piece of clothing casino that you saw him in you sought out and said i have to have that the is it the first one i also got or the first one i said i have to go find it because it's two different Both. things <laughs> okay let's hear it so I mean, what was it not, the first thing that i said oh man i actually kind of want to get that um was the madagascar shirt that he wears in the beginning yeah i, I it, it wasn't anything special other than i knew he was in disguise but it just was like so cool that it was so non-bondish yeah. Um, yeah. But the thing that I wound up getting that I also said in the same time was, of course, the Sunspell Riviera Polo. Yeah. You too. know, the, the guy had bowling yeah. balls for biceps and he's wearing this polo that was perfectly tailored to him. And he's he's wearing the chinos and he looks super relaxed. And I said, I you know, well before I even knew it was Sunspell, I said, my God, I can replicate that today. I mean, we all have blue polos. So, yeah, it, it was something and this is a big word that we use with whole bond lifestyle. It was accessible. It was something yeah. that it wouldn't look like I'm wearing a costume. I'm, I'm having my little invisible bond moment. Yeah. Invisible bond moment. I like that. Yeah. You know, and I also think it's great too, that a lot of these, lot of these brands, especially on the West coast, they're not available. So for me, I think it also started that I, you know, would order it. And when I wore it out, I know no one else had it. That's a big thing for me. You know, I'm, you know, I, you know, like I, I'm, I'm striving to be the minority, especially it's the way I look and whatnot, dress wise. Um, <laughs> you don't dress uh, like a cross, Californian person? Nah, probably. My, my boss the other day uh, said, I've never not seen you sell real estate in bands. Right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> You know, so I don't know that Daniel Craig wears them, although he's wearing uh, uh, Converse these days, I see with his suits. So, you know, there's a little Californication right there. I have a um, question for you about the, yeah. the whole Daniel Craig effect, because I always wondered if, if this is something that pulls us in. And that is Daniel Craig's James Bond is fallible. He's an anti-hero. I mean, he's, he's very capable. He knows how to do a lot of things and he gets the job done. 
But it's interesting. Somebody the other day said every mission of Daniel Craig's missions in all the films end in failure. You know, he's this anti-hero, fallible yeah, yeah. individual that's got a lot of rough spots. So do you think that's part of the attraction with this type of bond? I think so. I think that people can relate to someone who's, you know, just doesn't get beat up and then the next day looks perfect. I mean, I think that that took me back to during Casino Royale, yeah. the bathroom scene where he's looking at himself in the mirror, you know, and cleaning himself up where there's some humanity there behind yeah. those eyes. And um, that's that's definitely, I think, something that, you know, we all gravitated to or something that we could relate to because a lot of people do say, oh, Daniel Craig's the one that I think I can be like, or, you know, and I wonder if that, that might be why. Um, it could be. Speak, speaking of why, I want to circle back real quick to something we were talking about earlier. Uh, you know, why being the key word, you know, when I open my eyes in the morning, and there has to be a why, especially as a businessman, and I'm sure you can relate. I'm in outside yeah. sales. If I don't have a why, I don't go, I don't get up out of bed and produce. And I think that Daniel Craig has also been the, 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 the inspiration for my why. When that alarm goes off at 5 a.m., and I've got to get down to the gym or take some class or do anything physical, physical at all, you know, that, that bond connection is my why. Yeah. And I think that's so important in life to have a why. And yeah. um, maybe that's it. Maybe Daniel Craig, Daniel Craig is our why. It's right. Yeah. Ooh, it's, it's, uh, that's a big, bold statement, by yeah. the way. I've got yeah. to tell you, with, for me, you know, this, let's call it an evolution or de-evolution um, of the bond lifestyle from Daniel Craig to today has been an interesting evolution because again, it was totally, I'll admit on a Bible in front of a priest, that it was Daniel Craig that had me focus on fashion, on mm -hmm. brands, on getting in shape, on living a certain lifestyle, the cars, et cetera. But then after a while, you start to research other bonds. You start to look yeah. at, you know, what did Sean Connery do and, and Roger Moore and Lazenby and Maybe not so much Timothy Dalton. No, even Timothy Dalton. Um, and Brosnan, of course. And then yeah. you even go back farther and look at Ian Fleming. And, and so that's what I started to do. And then all of a sudden, the Bond lifestyle is so much bigger than Daniel Craig. But what I found is this, um, for want of a better word, residue of the Daniel Craig effect still acts as a foundation, uh, not just for me, but for everybody else. Like the hashtag Bond uh, Fitness Challenge is, uh, Bond 25 Fitness Challenge is not about Roger Moore. It's more about Daniel Craig. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I mean, how does that kind of affect you, this whole evolution of the Bond lifestyle? Well, you know, keep given today, uh, yeah, I couldn't live like Sean Connery, you know, <laughs> if I wanted to. Um, but there are th different things about each Bond that I think I emulate. You know, we always hear about the Panther, the way Connery walks, and I'm always yes. aware of how I walk, you know, and, and um, especially if I'm with someone that I know or someone that I'm dating, yep. you know, they always make a little comment, you know, just little, little things you can extract. And I love when you talk about how you've got something on that's Bond or you're doing something Bond and no one around you knows what's going on. Yeah. And uh, uh, again, it's almost like the springboard to jump off, um, to, to take what we know about these guys and incorporate it into our daily lives. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, and whoever you identify with, and listen, my mom loves Timothy Dalton, that sort of uptight British yeah. lesbian. My mother just thinks he is the sexiest man uh, of all of them. And I'm like, okay, mom, settle down. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> like him. Widow peak and yeah, all. It's, you know, it's amazing. Like, buttoned up. Well, so and I love that in Peel yes. is now incorporating some of his fashion, making some of those pieces, you know, fashionable again. I was really taken by that when I, when they, you guys, on, you know, started to unveil that line. Wow, there's some D Timothy Dalton inspiration in there. Fantastic. So when yeah. we're filming this, it's the evening before the official launch. But I just got a text from my friends over at N Peel, and there's a pre-sale going on. They said the number one thing that's been selling off the shelves today is. Timothy Dalton's blue polo. Wow. Uh, so wow. who knew? Who cheers knew? to Timothy. Thank Tim God. Cheers to Timothy. <laughs> yeah. I doff my hat that's, to you, sir. That's one. That's wonderful. You know, that's it that's. Is. I didn't see that one coming. Yeah. You know, but right? again, there, there's something for everyone, and I also think there's something for everyone at a certain age. I think as you get older, you can, you know, okay, well, that's what I identify with now. Yeah. And it's interesting, David, because I think the next bond, I'm almost 100 percent sure, will be younger than us. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, I'm actually yeah. hoping he's 32 to 35. I hope he's more yeah. 
in that kind of Fleming, you know, literary kind of image. But I've got to tell you, the um, I, I hearken back to uh, Quantum of Solace, especially because I think the the groundswell of Bond lifestyle and social media and the, what I call the megaphone up to the Bond lifestyle yeah. really started to hit that peak. Not even a peak, just it started to really hockey stick up in Quantum of Solace because you saw some amazing outfits. But the other thing that combined it, if you if you remember when Bond was in Haiti and he's mm -hmm. fighting Mr. Slate in the hotel room. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Like, just violent and brutal. He's bleeding and the guy's bleeding out. It's brutal. But then he puts on that jacket and he goes out and he's got the Tom Ford polo. And you're starting to put these things together. But how much of this emulation or inspiration is the fact that Daniel Craig's Bond is an effing badass. Yeah. How much of that do you think is that? A hundred, a hundred percent. You know, I mean, we all want to be him, and um, it's funny because, yeah, that that hair, not that Harrington jacket, but the, the other Harrington jacket. The Tom I call Ford that, one later. Yes, 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 David. I call that my first date jacket. <laughs> you, you have know, that jacket? You know, uh, yeah, oh yes, yeah, nice. yes, yes. Oh yeah. It's my first date jacket and just with a nice V-neck t-shirt, some great classic jeans, somewhere casual, but fancy kind of, you know, and that's, and it's like my lucky, I don't want to say it's my lucky jacket, but you know. Oh, see, that, that's the story we want to hear. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, um, and I put it on and I, and I feel like, you know, okay, I've got piece of quantum with me you know what i mean it gives me that little extra pep in my step you know yeah. um it gives me that little that edge um and um you know the daniel craig era the clothing and everything about it is i mean you know you go to a nice party you now to make a vesper oh you know let me, i want to try your vesper how did you make it i mean it leads to, to to all kinds of conversations and interactions with people um and i love that moment where you divulge that where you become vulnerable and you mm -hmm. tell someone or open up to someone about your love for bond. It, it actually happened yesterday for me oh. uh, where I was, How did with it, some, go? it went really well. They, they, she said, uh, Oh, uh, casino is my, my favorite. She goes, I really like that one. And I just, went, okay. I, I know. Her. I know. And you know what? It's funny because, um, I have to be with someone, not who's a Bond nut like me, but right. who who generally likes these films and who will will uh, not tolerate, but who will participate in word. what is important to me. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, and I think there's a whole nother show right there for I think the 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 women who love uh, us Bond fans. I mean, let's that that well, in itself would be an interesting topic, but. Um, I, I want to talk about that aspect. I want I want to flesh that out a little bit because I, I I warrant that anybody that's clicked on this video, and saw the description said, hmm, I wonder if they're going to be talking about what I'm feeling, and that is the fact that this invisible bond moment, putting on your Tom Ford Harrington, yeah. looking looking at a you know an Omega watch or something like that, I've always talked about is is a is an escape valve, and yeah. it's not cosplay. It's not walking around going, I'm James yeah. Bond. It is really about the idea that we all live very stressful lives. The world is a stressful place. And quite frankly, there's nothing wrong with adults and young people and old people mm -hmm. having a moment where they just release that little valve and escape. And if you have a little reminder or if you have something on that can help you do that or to transport you to a more confident place, yeah. guess what? There's nothing wrong with that. But, but all that's <laughs> happening between these two things right yeah. here, there comes a time, I'm not saying you're gonna do like a YouTube video like this, sure, but there sure. comes a time, by the way, you just did, that <laughs> you probably do need to tell somebody like, hey, if I look like Daniel Craig wearing this outfit, it's because it's his outfit. So yeah, yeah. so how does that, tell me about your, your headspace when you go it's, through that. It's like a moment of surrender. And you know, uh, where you just, <laughs> You just put your cards on the table and, you know, I've, I've not that I've done it enough, but I've certainly done it to the point where, um, um, you know, Hey, there's something I want to talk to you about. Are they compliment something you're wearing or why are we here again? Going yesterday was my birthday. We went to this little wine shop. She met me for lunch. We had some champagne and she said, you know, what's cool. What do you, what, what's going on over here? What are you doing here? I said, well, I'm actually going to go to Tom Ford. There's a suit I've been saving up for. And that led into the conversation. And, um, you know, they, she thought that was very cute. 
And then I say, look, I want to be very clear. This this sort of bond mania that I have, you're going to benefit from this. I said, because we were yeah. talking about where we'd like to go on vacation. And I said, look, the good news is for you, anywhere that there's a bond vacation, you're going to love. And I pulled up the phone and I said, here's where I really want to plan a vacation, but I'm waiting to meet someone special and started showing her photos from Goldeneye. There are the beach huts. There's a lagoon cottage. You know, um, they she thought it was very cute and um, and enjoyed that. I can keep going on this conversation. It's kind of weird to be talking publicly about it. But tonight she's coming over to watch Casino. Oh, nice. That's awesome. So, but but it, you know, I she, think. It's you know what I mean? It's like these things are connected and, and yeah. uh, someone has to think that's cute. And they have to think that I host a podcast on the music of Bond. They need to think that's cute. You know, they don't need to, it doesn't need to go beyond that. But I mean, it just needs sure. to be so important to me and such a major part of my life. You know, the older I get, the more secure I get, the more I want to share this with the people around me. And funny enough, when they revealed the new, um, the title, the, the, the video of the title, No yeah. Time to Die, I removed No Time to Die. And I just put hashtag man crush and I blasted that on the Instagram story. That is All so of my cool. clients saw it. Everyone yep. I know saw it. I caught a little grief, you know, what is yeah. this hashtag man crush? Oh, like, you know, but the majority of the people thought it was really cool. And I'm so glad that I put it out there. But that's, you know, that's, that's an important thing. And I know it's, it's a bit awkward. It's like a confessional. You didn't expect <laughs> this, but, but I, I do want others to hear this because I do get messages. And I mean, on a weekly basis with people saying, um, David, you know, can you, can you tell my spouse or wife that, you know, there's much worse out there than I am. And you get yeah. more packages than me. I even did this video around that to help somebody out. And I, I did like a Christmas thing, like, you know, Hey, tell them to come to the, to the fireside. But the reality is, is that you hit on something that I think everybody should say, and that is the fact that this hobby, and it is a hobby, or this community yeah. that we're in, yeah. it's about like-minded individuals that really have built strong friendships, first and foremost, even before we talk about clothing. But it has helped us to feel better, to look better, to be in the best health of our lives, yeah. to dress better, to understand how to eat better, maybe even drink better, you know, the vices of the world travel better, look at, um, you know, certain vehicles and technology with a more, you know, sartorial eye, like all mm -hmm. of these things, it's good. It's not, and this is not to dismiss any other hobby, but it's not like, you know, we're, you know, shooting from a tower somewhere or, you know, yeah. creating something, you know, in a bottle, uh, in a basement somewhere We're we're actually trying to become more of a capable individual. And you said it right. The side effects they're going to benefit from. Yeah. And and we've heard Absolutely. great stories to that. And and if and if that's not something that they would benefit from or feel comfortable with, I'd like to know that right out of the gate. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And I think there I'm 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 talking about my love life to the world. I love this. Therein lies the problem <laughs> is, is so many of them say so many girls I've met I said, Oh, that's really cool. And then a couple months in, they're like, Oh, really? Is that what you want? You want to watch that? Okay. Or you want to go to that screening or you want to, you know, and I'm like, Well, this is really important to me. And um and, and to your point, what you just talked about, it's it's helped us become better men. You know, I think uh, more well-rounded, um, deeper, more meaningful uh, men um, and, uh, you know, um, most of it <laughs> helps us, uh, you know, create this sort of uh, 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 manhood. Um, and I think it's a, it's a great, um, again, beacon is the word I keep coming back to that like yeah, I mean, guides our way. You yeah, know? Absolutely. Like we know that women love it when you slap them on the ass and go oh man God. talk and send them on their way. So, oh, I mean, man. the fact that we know that now helps us to really connect with oh, women. Oh, man. It is that, that, yeah, maybe not that part, you know? Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. It's but but, I, but it's interesting you say something. And I haven't talked at all about this on videos, but um, every one of my clients, and I have relationships with the highest levels within these corporations that I work with, um, they all know about my bond passion and they love it. I've had some people come up with their families to tour the museum, you know, to have some drinks, to have bond yeah. theme nights. Uh, they also know that I'm on social media. They love the fact that I'm an old man that has found a way to chisel away the marble of social media. So my company, which is an advertising and marketing company, does a lot with, um, influencer marketing, but, but in a, in the pharmaceutical arena and, to be able to go in there and say, I'm walking the walk and not just talking the talk has actually helped to elevate my conversation. Yeah. So when they see, you know, you know, the YouTube and the amount of hits and views and things like that, they're like, 
maybe I should listen a little yeah. bit more. But it's totally you can you can who, package who, it however you want. Yeah, who could discount you for being passionate about something in life? You know, I mean, I think no matter what it is, that's something I always look for in anyone, especially a woman, is enthusiasm. You know, show me what are you enthusiastic about? I don't care about what you do. But what are you enthusiastic about? What do you love? What gets you out of bed in the morning? Yeah. And I can't imagine my life without Bond now more than ever. You know, I mean, that's a really sad existence for me. It's brought so much joy. And again, yesterday was my birthday. I, I got all these wonderful gifts from family and friends, all of which I had. I mean, I don't know how many more times <laughs> I'm getting the Bond. I got like seven copies of the cocktail book, you know, the Toshin book. I mean, I just... It's wonderful and I have the heart to tell them, but they know that that means something to me and it's a way of them to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I hear what you're saying. I understand what you like and what you're passionate about. And, and um, uh, it's, it's incredibly thoughtful whenever someone does something for me uh, that's bond related, you know, that they know that about me. I'm going to I'm going to save you from this emotional dissection that you didn't know was going to <laughs> hit you because I want to move to talking about the uh, Daniel Craig as it pertains to style. Yeah. Um, style within the movie. So one of the things, for example, um, is you on your birthday went out to Tom Ford and you bought a suit. Yes. Talk to yes, me about I, that. I, I saved up. I've been saving up money, putting a little aside, putting a little aside. And uh, yesterday was the day. I, like I said, I went over to uh, uh, Rattle for Deo Drive. How bougie of me. And had some had several glasses of champagne, a wonderful lunch. And then I, I walked over to the store and there was a salesperson that I'd been working with. And again, you know, uh, using you and, and what Daniel Craig wears and all that and what Bond wears, I went in and I said, okay, well, for my height, my weight, my size, what's the right suit? What, what are the right lapels for me? And I found the suit that looks incredible. And it was just, it was- It's the O'Connor, right? Experience. Yes, the O'Connor. And um, it uh, it's a dream come true. And, and you know- Listen, this isn't for everybody. And I think one of the greatest things that you have done is the frugal bond. And listen, uh, Daniel, love, I'm all over it. You know, I buy all of that stuff. And you're absolutely right. I love wearing that Harrington because when the salsa spills on it, I'm okay. You know, yeah. um, you know, so I think that each is own and, you know, it's ridiculous the amount of money we spend on these things, but it, you know, it brings, brings you joy and it's, it's better for you than drugs. Yeah. Um, I, I love it too. I mean, there's, there's iconic alternatives, which is um, this gentleman named John who is, is doing what I used to do with the frugal bond moments and like has blown it out to this yeah. huge rate. And it's absolutely amazing. And what it, what it's done is, is allowed uh, people that don't have a lot of spending money or younger people mm -hmm. to really connect with that style of bond. And, and most of it happens to be Daniel Craig. And so what do you think it is? I mean, I know that there's a nice mix in the Daniel Craig films of both casual clothing and the really kind of dressy clothing. Is it the way he wears it? Is it his badass nature? Is it the clothes themselves? I mean, what do you, what do you think it is? Uh, a combination of all of them, obviously. But the thing I notice about him is is that when he, he puts them on, it's not that he doesn't have a respect, but the clothes don't wear him. You know, uh, he wears the clothes. And and even yesterday, putting on the jacket, I first got kind of tense, like, Jesus, oh my God, this is really expensive. Like, don't go near me, come, don't touch me, don't come near me. You know, um, um, very aware of my surroundings. And then I thought, yeah. no, you know, you gotta get in it, you gotta move around and, and you know, and, and wear these clothes and just be brave and bold enough to be the most overdressed guy in the room. <laughs> it's funny you say that too, because you know, um, one, my first expensive it. pair of shoes that I purchased, yeah. um, I think they were the Philip Churches from Quantum of Solace. And they were like, Expensive. I'm just going to yeah. say it. Yeah. And I remember not wearing them for about a year or sort of wearing them when mm. I knew like, you know, there was no, not a raindrop out there or anything like that. Yeah. And somebody came to me one day and said, David, wear your clothing, wear it to death. Good clothing is going to last. And now yeah. I don't care what it is. I wear it everywhere and anywhere. And I tell you, I get so much joy out of not babying this stuff. I did the same yeah. thing when I got my Aston though. I was like driving it like this. I bet. And you know, if there was construction, I'd turn around and do a U-turn and no, you just, get, you've got to push through and guess what? You're going to get a little pull. Something's going to happen to that yeah. beautiful suit and you're going to want to punch the person that did that or break <laughs> up with them. But <laughs> those things are made to be worn. And the yeah. worst thing I've heard is there, there's a, there's a person I know that, you know, stores a lot of their clothing 
Yeah. And it's like, ugh, it's like that stuff is to be worn, to become yeah. part of you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got to to just take it out into the world. And um, um, I, I used to be that way a little bit, but then I just thought, okay, to hell with that. You know, time is of the essence. Let's absolutely. let's wear it. So I can't wait. It's being tailored now, and um, I'm just praying that somebody's going to get married soon. <laughs> I know you. Now you need an excuse. Yeah, to I need it. Yeah, you know, the good news is I'm close enough to Vegas. So if I need to just go somewhere and get dressed up, head out to the Sinatra, you know, at the Encore, have a nice dinner, um, I'm ready to go. But uh, I'm ready for someone to get married. I didn't say I was ready to get married. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe there'll be an occasion in 2020 where we can uh, meet up for Diamonds Are Forever reunion in Vegas. That That's would be cool. Sense. That would be very cool. I was talking to Warren Ringham about that at Q the Music, saying to do a residency there. Those guys should get over there. It'd be incredible at the Flamingo. Oh my I mean, gosh. Right? And then Absolutely. Just spring, get into the Elrod house. That We've talked about that. I've always had a dream to do a screening at the Elrod house in Palm Springs of Diamonds Are Forever. I just yeah. think that That'd that be amazing. Be, Start I organizing. Know, I'm there. I know. I know. I'm going to work. I'm going to, I'm going to see what I can do. That's, that's a dream of mine. I, uh, I've got a question for you. Cause it's, a, it's about the Daniel Craig effect, um, sure. but it, it's still keeping on style. So you just got this amazing suit for your birthday. And um, I know this isn't an interview of you, but I, I have to ask this question because I typically do. Um, Holy grail. Like if, if somebody came to you and said, money is no object, access is no object. You can have any piece of clothing. It's got to be in the, within the Daniel Craig world, though. It can't be, you know, Sean Connery's top hat or something like that. It's weird. Um, <laughs> what would that, what would it be? That is an amazing question. What Take would Take your time, because you only get one I, pair. I, of clothing. Yes. So, um, yeah, not a watch or cufflink or anything like that. Okay. It should be clothing. Okay. Um, I would say the Tom Ford Tux in Quantum. Ooh, nice. I mean, when he's standing at that railing and David Arnold, the strings kick in and he's looking down, I mean, yeah. he looks the business. Is that I in mean, the Tosca that, scene? Yes. Yes. And isn't that crazy that that scene, it's not even his Tux. I mean, he steals it, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it fits Tucky perfectly. Me, it was not, yeah, it was perfectly it tailored. It fits perfectly. And I love the fact that they even got a guy that was like yeah. built like him and stuff like that. But that's yeah. that's that Daniel Craig effect of like, it's a badass moment of, of course, the tuxedo fits perfectly. Yeah. And I always, anytime I see that door handle, you know, when I'm in my life, when I see a door handle that resembles the one that he broke off, I always give it a little extra, you know, like just. <laughs> Dude, you realize you would break your wrist. I know. I know. I know. That's I also the Daniel that's Craig effect, which you can't do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but I loved I loved the way he looked in that scene. I love that whole scene. Actually, it's one of my favorite scenes from. Yeah. Music. you know, um, he looks so. And I know we that gets talked about to death, but the, oh, the that scene too. quantum is stellar, start to finish. Everything it's the perfect blend of like sophistication and down and dirty. Well, it's um, funny. It's funny. That's a bit of a phenomenon too, because I find that people that gravitate to Bond lifestyle, uh, the hobby, and certainly Daniel Craig, the effect and the phenomena. They love quantum, and if it's not for the story and for the editing, certainly, um, it's it's for everything else around it. I mean, it's beautifully shot. Yeah, uh, a lot of the music sounds great. Um, you know, Bond is a total badass in it, and the clothing is undeniably probably the best. What do you yeah, think? I think so, hands down. Um, I think it's the most beautifully shot of all four Bond films. You know, when people were comparing Quantum and and Casino, uh, I think. Quantum is a better looking film. I really do. I know that's going to cause some controversy. I, if anyone knows me knows that on my show, I'm I'm a huge Quantum fan, and I was the very very from day one. You know, I was looking around the theater with a big grin on my face, and nobody was getting it, including the friends I was with. And I thought, oh, okay, yeah, all right. Um, but I think the look of that film, I think Mark Forster specifically shot the hell out of it. Oh my gosh, um, absolutely. You know, and I also think that that with that film, Daniel, because of this, with this success, really had his say. I think they just turned it over. Whatever Daniel want, wanted, he got it, yeah. and um, every everything that was, you know, everything he chose, all his clothes looked and great. The Mathis scene and and with the the shawl uh, cardigan. Oh, um, I mean, he and just kind of leans back. And he's got the chucka boots on and the, the Levi's. I mean, I've tried to emulate that look a thousand times. 
the man's hair is perfect. You know, <laughs> I know Tom Sears loves to talk about Daniel's hair. That's no knock, but that his hair in that scene, I say, Tommy, that is the greatest Daniel Craig hair I've ever seen. You know, he looks that, fantastic. That scene has launched a million cardigans. I mean, it, it not mm. only did for that cardigan, yeah. Um, but also for every other cardigan. And yeah. now, I mean, I'm wearing one right now. Every yeah. line of men's clothing, everything, every single season since 2008 yeah. has cardigans as a part of it. It's amazing. Even more so than Mr. Rogers affected us. Yeah, I know. Like that made it, he's so cool. It made the cardigans cool again. Speaking of which, did you get the ivory cardigan, the Tom Ford one that yeah. he wore in the photo shoot? Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, it's great. I got the blue one, the ivory one. Um, and the black one. Yeah. <laughs> they're great. I love those things. They're, they're yeah, fantastic. They're, they I'm actually, really they're, they're, they're beautifully, they feel great. I know they're, you know, Merino wool, they're not cashmere, but they wear really well. They're, they're just, yeah. Tom Ford kind of does it right, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. You're not getting out of that question. What I haven't heard your answer. What's your answer? What's the one thing you would have? I mean, you probably have it. That's the, no. That's, no, I, I, there's tons of stuff. What, I, but, but, but what's my, on the top of your hit list? What's on the top of your hit list? See, mine would be, that's a great question too. Mine would be something just because it's so infuriatingly uh, distant in the sense that no one's been able to find it. So, so all right. So mine would be the uh, blue rugby shirt at in the Venice scene of Casino Royale, you know, when he's running um, after Venice. Nobody knows who made it. It's a simple shirt. Uh, there's actually a really good replica out there from Magnoli. I just ordered it two nights ago. It, you will love it. I mean, yeah, I have to yeah, say, he did a great beautiful company. job. It's it's a thin cotton, so it wears with you. I mean, you he he got the fabric right on that. He got the buttons right. He got the collar. I wear that all the time, actually. Yeah, yeah. But I, it's just because it's so out of reach. You know, it's that the hunt. You know, when you're hunting for this stuff, the hunt is half of the enjoyment. Yeah. And that is just this game. You know, it's the two-headed rhinoceros. That's horrible. I would never hunt for animals. But um, it's just it's just out of reach. So that would probably be my answer. Got it. Interesting. And there's something else that I've got to know that I've yes. always – When you asked Daniel Craig about being a style icon, yeah. what was your interpretation of his response? I mean, he obviously – you know. Like anytime we, we take a compliment, we always get uncomfortable. And that's yeah. kind of what I sensed. But what, what, what was your, what, what were you thinking? What was, how, how did you feel after that, that experience? Were you, did you, I mean, I, I mean, that was like, from knowing you, as we all do, I mean, that was such a magical moment for you. It was magical. Um, I mean, yeah. And I, how did you feel? And what, would, what was your interpretation of Daniel's I, response? I think he was doing a little bit of acting. Just a yeah. little bit. I think, yeah. I think honestly, he knows the influence that he has on clothing and style. And I think he knows that he is a clothing junkie. Yeah. Um, he was then. He's certainly even more so now. And he influences a lot of what's worn on, you know, in the Bond movies and, of course, in his life. So it's funny, too, because, you know, he kind of pulled this stuff like, what, this old stuff? And then I'm like, yeah. And I started naming all the brands. And he was like, <laughs> and, of course... He was wearing only high-end brands, yeah. like really expensive stuff, including like really expensive leather jackets. So yeah. he was called out a little bit on that, but I think he was also having fun with it. His his best story with me, because I spent a lot of time up there actually, it was all fashion. And he's talking about how you should be able to have sex in your suit um, and just crumple it up and sleep in it and just throw it in a ball. But you know, wow. it, after having sex in that suit, that suit should look amazing. And you know, I said to him, oh, that's what I've been doing wrong all these years. <laughs> oh, Fun moments. Fun yeah, moments. That, is, that is, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, you know, we, did he, he made a, a comment about, oh, whatever they give me or something to that effect. Was that, did um, he? He, he said, uh, whatever, um, the clothing that I like is the clothing that's free. Got it. So the stuff he gets free. But there's the photos of him coming out of shops, holding a bag, you well, know. All right, so let's talk about this. I want to yeah. move over to No Time to Die because yeah. obviously, you know, people are keeping an eagle eye out for Craig, um, what he's wearing, trying to find it. What are, you, what are your hopes for him as a character and actor for No Time to Die? What do you want to see? Oh, that's a big question and it deserves a big answer. Um, I, I'd love to see some things that are accessible, more accessible. Um, I, I love when brands you know, we're, we're moving into different seasons and they bring it back so everyone can enjoy it. 
I mean, Billy Reed just knocked it out of the park with that pea coat. We we were all able to get that pea coat. Yeah. And what a pea coat. I wish I could wear a pea coat in Los Angeles. Yeah. But you put it on, you just feel so cool, especially if you're in London. That wearing that pea coat in London is a, a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um you know, I'm 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 watching what you're doing. I'm watching all the reports. You're right. My God, I hope there's no more sunglasses coming out. Good heavens! How many pairs of sunglasses do we have to buy? It's and ridiculous. Was, it is. And and correct me if I'm wrong, David. There's been no Tom Ford sunglasses, correct? No, and I don't think there will be. Interesting. They had a beautiful yeah. wall in the, the shop yesterday, there, and I was kind of looking around, going, "There, oh, there will be some items um, yeah. coming out besides the jeans and the suits." But they have an entire capsule line. I, I tell you, you, you've hit upon something very interesting. It's, it's an effect that the brands now are not leaning back in their chair. Um, back in Quantum, you know, you had to motivate yeah. the brands. I mean, you know, me going to Billy Reed and others and saying, hey, why don't you do this for Skyfall? And then, and then suddenly with Spectre, the brands were really getting it and they were mm -hmm. proactively engaging. Now you've got brands like all of our brand and NPL and Hackett and other places creating entire lines. You've got people, when they know or see or have heard that their items are going to be in there, they start to mobilize the factory. They get things starting to churn out. They yeah. start to think about That's a great. campaign around it. They get in touch with Eon and say, how much, how little, how, you know, what are our confines of the Bond brand Bible that we've got to stay within? So brands are getting that. And I think that's a part of why you're seeing more um, Bond lifestylers become uh, more vocal because the brands are giving them platforms to do that. And, and again, you know, the title of this video, the Daniel Craig effect, that really was catapulted through that whole Daniel Craig effect that we first started yeah. the conversation. It's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. And it's grown. And, you know, you've had a tremendous amount to do with this, David. I know you know this, but you really have. You were like the conduit between, you know, Daniel Craig and the, and the fan community. The junkie. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. You know, so you're doing you're doing the Lord's work. Um, I'm sure they're 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 loving you, and I'm I'm, I'm I, I I'm curious to see how that relationship, your relationship with you know Eon evolves. I mean, you know, keeping you close by is I'll, a good I'll, I'll thing be, for everyone. Well, thank you. I, I'll be frank with you, and it and it's not to dismiss them in any way, and it's not to disrespect them. I honestly have zero relationship with Eon, and and they have to keep it like that because um, I first of all I'm and I love this. This is from AJ Chowdhury. He gave me this. I am a hair on the dog on a, on a dog. I'm a hair yeah, on yeah. a dog in the in the world of Bond. But um, the times that I've spoken to Eon have been very few, and quite frankly, their mantra is with um, people in social media. They want to keep them at arm's length because then it's not authentic. If they're puppeteering me and things like that, it's mm -hmm. not authentic. Now, that makes sense. If they create platforms to do more events like the NPL event and do a, a mm -hmm. multi, you know, cast between New York and, and uh, London, which you were missed. Oh. Uh, John, John was invited. Everybody oh. should know that. And, he, yes. and you'll keep I, being invited. I, 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 thank you. I was, that was, I had family in town and that was very tough. I, I let them know how much it meant to me that they came to visit me when I told them, because this is what I could have been doing. So I hope this lets you guys know, my family know how much I love you. <laughs> they, they, they'll, it, you showed them and there'll be a million more. But yeah. my point is that, um, you know, I don't know if anybody has a relationship. They have a relationship with the movies, the actors, the producers, and that's probably the right thing. They're there to make movies. They're not there to uh, handle social media people, mm -hmm. but. If they there came to you and said, David, what, what, tell us what we should do. How do we connect the, the franchise with the fan base? What do you think the key ingredient is? I would definitely tell them. Uh, okay, and I, okay. may, I may, I may have, I may <laughs> have told them. I okay. may have told them already. We should, you should, but there, there needs to be, I'm, this is going to sound weird and I'm not saying it right, but there needs to be more stuff for us to buy. You know, I don't feel like I don't feel like they're fully monopolizing on, you know, I mean, with something like Star Wars, let's say, my God, there's so much, you know, you can invest in and collect and all that. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but sometimes when a, when there's a film that comes out, I'm hungry, you know, to to have things that connect me to the to the film, you know, to put in my collection. And, um, you know, I end up with every poster from every country, um, a couple of really expensive watches. Um, but I feel like, you know, we get maybe a book, but I just feel like, God, I wish they would do more for us as fans as far as like what we could collect, you know. 
In a discussion I had literally yesterday, I was talking to somebody and I said, for me, my wish list would be more items, more things that people could collect that were accessible to every level of socioeconomical background, meaning you don't need to be making a certain amount of money to afford yeah. that. Like if they had a clothing line, I joked about it at Target, you know, a small clothing line of James Bond pajamas that you could, you know, wear Roger Moore's pajamas <laughs> from Live and Let Die or, you know, something where it was just mm. more accessible and not just even fashion, but, you know, certain aspects of Bond that you want to collect. I just, yeah. it, it seems like um, things are just at such a high echelon and, and I support the brands that do that and I yeah. purchase from them and I patronize them and I, I you know, doff my hat to them. But I just wish there was more for every level of collecting in person. Yeah, I agree. I think there should be. And hopefully we'll, we'll see what's going to happen. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of money being left on the table for these guys. We will. That, we will. You know, let me ask you, I, cause I have to know this. Uh, do you, you, Daniel Craig knows who you are. I mean, there's no, I've, I've often thought of this. He's got to know your work. His team, he's got a team of people. There's no way that they haven't seen you, seen your videos, seen what you're doing. Do you, I mean, is that, does that ever, do you ever think about that? I mean, do you ever think that, that, you know. I'm sure his bodyguards have pictures of me. <laughs> you know, surveillance and things like that. Um, security at his house. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, know. they've got it. His team has got to know who you are and know what you're, you know, the work you're doing. Right. Yeah. Who knows? I, in my mind, I always think they do. You know, I'll that's I'll, I'll take your mind. And yeah, uh, yeah, they, yeah. I mean, you definitely had an influence on that, David. I, I fully believe that, you know, I mean, um, I'm sure as soon as he put something on that, those people are messaging you right away. You know, well, they're Get probably it. they're probably more influenced by what's Daniel wearing or something like that, because he's he's on it. I mean, he's it's unbelievable. Like white on it's rice. Fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. Between what's Daniel wearing and uh, Ray Donovan, I'm a huge fan of Ray Donovan's look and clothing. That's okay. kind of my my real estate daily yeah. look: the jacket, the 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 custom button down. You follow what's Ray wearing? Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's a great one. That's Harris's. Yeah. Yes, those two guys. I mean, there are two. If you're interested in men's fashion, you know, if you have an iota of just the curiosity about that. What's Daniel wearing? What's Ray wearing? And you're set. You know? I agree. All yeah. right. Here's the last question. All right. And I, I think it's a good one. It's a thinker. <laughs> so I don't know if it's a big question, but it's a thinking question. Uh, okay. So no time to die is over. We all say goodbye to Daniel Craig, allegedly. Yeah. Um, a new Bond steps into the role. He's 32 years old. He's not Daniel Craig. What does that do for your mindset as far as the James Bond look? Well, I'm very aware of the fact that things need to be age appropriate on me. I, I certainly don't get more conservative. Uh, I do have a tendency to get more classic, um, but I also love color. Um, um, another line that I'm a fan of is Paul Smith and I have a, a cobalt blue Paul Smith uh, suit. And when I wear it, people will go, wow, that looks great. I mean, I'm you know, I, I love my grandfather was very much like Harry in the sense that he would wear bright colors, you know, and he was mm -hmm. I don't want anyone to miss me. And whenever someone gives me a hard time about what I'm wearing, if it's because of the color or the cut or my shoes, yeah. I, I use that line. I don't want anyone to miss me. Um, uh, at the same time, you know, I do have to be aware of, you know, what looks good on a 33 year old man and a 48 year old man. Um, it needs to be taken into consideration. Um, I certainly don't buy things just to buy them. I mean, I really do generally right. need to love them. And I love when what I love, you know, Aqua Terra just happened to be, you know, one of my favorite watches. Thank God it was the one he wore, Inspector. That's the one I ended up with. But when I went in and I had my money and I was about to put it down, I said, okay, well, let me just look at all the watches. But I kept coming back to the blue Aqua Terra. I thought, oh my God, this is beautiful. Yeah. Um, if there is one piece that I would tell people, you know, hey, I, I'm going to spend money on one thing. I, I, I bought it at a time when I was getting into outside sales, straight commission, and I bought that watch. And there isn't a day that goes by that when I don't put it on, I just go, badass. Yeah. I don't care if I have an old T-shirt on. You put an Omega on your wrist and you feel fantastic. Yeah, it's um, true. It does something. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me circle back around your question. It's definitely going to play into, you know, how I, you know, 
I can't relate to a 33 year old. I don't know that I want to relate to a 33 year old, but, um, you know, Daniel will always be with me the way that Steve McQueen has always been with us. It's a great, point. you know, um, the Barracuda jacket, Elvis, Sinatra, yeah. Steve McQueen, Jesus Christ. If, if that doesn't work for you, you're, you're listening to the wrong podcast, YouTube <laughs> video, you it's know, true. And it's true. It's true. I would imagine. Style. Yeah. I mean, that, Timeless. And that's when I, when I walked in yesterday to Tom Ford, I said to him, I said, look, I need, need to think about weather. I'm in Southern California and yeah. I don't need to be able to wear this suit year round. But I said, I want something that's timeless. You know, what's, you know, what's the boldest color and the most timeless cut? And he just put it, grabbed it. I looked at everything else and I said, you got it. This is the one. Yeah. Let's go. Reporting. I'm in total agreement with you because the one thing I'd be looking for the new bond is what kind of timeless, classic, stylish, not fashionable, stylish clothing are they putting them in? And is it right for me? Because I do like to connect with the character and not just the actor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got some things from Olivar Brown that, you know, they're Connery related and Roger Moore related that I love to wear. But if they're classic and stylish and it's, I have to ask, I have to answer the question, would I wear it if James Bond wasn't wearing it? And if I answer yes, then yeah, I'll own it. Yeah. You know, that that's kind of the, the gravitas that I put myself through. But it it is an interesting question because I know so many people are connected to the Daniel Craig yeah. effect. But really, at the heart of it, we're going to be evaluating Bond overall. Totally. And as you now that you've asked the question and you put it like that, I think it could very well have a tremendous effect on how I see things because there is something about Daniel Craig's Bond that I relate to and aspire to so it just depends on who they choose really depends on who they choose um but i think daniel will be with me for the rest of my life you know i will always aspire to those classic i mean the sunspell riviera you could put that on right now it's as wonderful as an item of clothing as it was you know all those years ago let's not do the math but <laughs> casino royal came out you know um and with that though but Dave, what, I don't know that we, we got into the essence of it. What is it about Daniel Craig? Why him? What is it about him that we all look at? I mean, I really think this plays into a tr plays such a major role on the success of, of his films because, you know, they're pretty, you know, uh, people love them and then they don't love them and then they love them again. You know, I mean, the longevity of this era has, has largely to do with our love for Daniel Craig specifically. Right. Um, what is I, that? I think, well, for, for me, I can only answer for myself. For me, it's, it's a few things. It's definitely the individual Daniel Craig, the actor, doesn't give a shit. Like, you know, he's, yeah. he's doing it, but, you know, he's not sitting there going, doing it for the fan base. And yeah. there is a little bit of a Steve McQueen, like, hey, I'm going to live my life and I'm going to be dirty and, and shaggy. And, yeah. you know, you're just going to have to accept Con Connery. it. Connery was that way. Connery, too. same yeah, way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I think that there's a certain amount of like badassery that goes on with yeah. the individual, but it is his bond. It is the interpretation of his bond that I gravitate to. It's the rough and tumble, the guy, you feel like he could snap your spine like a potato chip. Yeah. And there's something about that capability um, that he's an assassin. Like he is the first bond that I didn't say he's a spy. I don't say he's a spy. <laughs> I say he's an assassin. Yeah, and that's yeah. a totally different mindset. And then you add to the fact that, you know, he, he's in like superhero shape and, you know, he's in he's my age. I mean, there's so many little things, but it's that big. It's the essence. It's that intangible thing that he brings to the table. And then it's how the producers and directors have shaped the movies around him to give him an incredible playground to play in. That's what I gravitate to. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. That's heady stuff. I know. You know, when I was preparing for this and I was thinking about us doing the show, I thought, okay, well, I know we're going to have lots of laughs as we did on the, the JVR episode about the man crush. And it is that. And the first time I ever really heard that is, is a good friend of mine. His girlfriend was like, had just come back with her boyfriend from seeing Drive with Ryan Gosling. And she goes, oh, you have such a huge man crush on Ryan Gosling. And I just sat there and I was quiet and I was going, well, eh, I kind of. I have a man crush on Daniel Craig. I don't know if I want to admit <laughs> this, but now I'm just, you know, all in, let the man, you know, wave the, wave that flag, the man crush 
flag. Um, I, there's something about him that will will go on, and I I hope in this film, and I think he will. I think Dan is going to uh, much be much more open and embrace the fans. You know, um, I think so too. I, I think it I, seems yeah, like yeah. he's having fun this time around. Yep, yep, yeah. So the man crush will only increase. Increase, you know. Um, and by the way, you see what we've done here, which is very smart of us. We literally bookended yes. this one hour conversation with a man crush. We've, yeah. we've, we've hugged it, if you yeah. will. <laughs> you got to embrace it. You know, it's so important. Um, but I'm curious to see what happens next. And, I, and again, David, you know, you got, you've done such wonderful things about, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll never forget. I discovered your website on Thanksgiving and I remember while everyone was having Thanksgiving, I had my laptop on kind of checking out your videos and seeing what was going on and ordering stuff. And I even think I was, I told somebody I was working. <laughs> 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 it was but, a good excuse. Yeah, you've done great work, man. I'm really a, oh, a, a huge fan, and and uh, you you know you've made so much of uh, obtaining these items and clothing possible. So well, good thank job. You. It's, it's yeah, been a really passion project. And by the way, not not that I need to quit pro quo, but um, thank you for what you do. Thank you for the entertainment you've given me. Uh, you've been a big part of my commute, like I've told you before. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the fact that you now are even more of a regular on JBR, I can't wait to hear what you and the other Motley crew over there brings yeah. to the table. So thanks for keeping that alive. Totally. And I've, I've, Tom's given me a little, I've, I've pulled back the curtain a little bit. He, Tom's really got some exciting things um, that are around the band. And there's one thing in particular, if we can make happen, will be very exciting. All right. Thank well, we'll keep crossed. that under wraps for now. We can't <laughs> wait to see. Yeah. All right. J.W. John Williams, thank you so much for joining us. And this has been David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience, and we will see you all very soon. Take, Take care. care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from The Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information, plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you, just because we know you. Talk to you soon.